There's a simple scientific law in physics. For every action, there's an equal reaction. And we even see that in the political world. The Democrats were absolutely cratering. It was going to be a complete, total landslide election. By the way, it still will be. Don't believe the false narrative coming to you from the lying legacy corporate corrupt mainstream media. Kamala is not winning. She is not surging. She is not popular. Relax. Breathe in. Breathe out. So because the Democrats were, in fact, totally and completely cratering, what did they do? They pulled off a coup within their own party. They sidestepped the sitting president who was running for re-election, whom the people voted for in their <clears throat> very controlled primary. But nonetheless, real people actually did go to the polls and vote for him. And basically, the powers that be, i.e. Barack Misobotamus, Nancy Botox Pelosi, Chuck E. Cheese Schumer, and I am sure... Camilla Kamali thinks she's a hottie Harris, all behind the scenes pushed him aside to prop up the DEI woman. And I don't mean diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'm talking about didn't earn it. So immediately, there were people on the right, conservatives, conservative pundits, conservative media, People like Lindsey Graham and, and, and conservative talk people like Kim Iverson, etc. Mr. Trump, you've got to replace J.D. Vance. You've got to replace... J.D. Vance made sense okay when you were going to like dominate Joe Biden, but you, you, you can't... Look, look at what they got on him. The, 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 the crazy cat lady and just look at, look at the... the he's weird and, and you've got to replace him. Stop. 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 We're not going to gain any ground replacing out J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance is not the problem. In fact, J.D. Vance is the reason the Libloons are still in panic mode. See, they've got a false sense of security because liberals, by and large, usually believe their own propaganda. And when people start swallowing and believing their own propaganda, that's when they get into trouble. Just like when members of the Third Reich believed that there was going to be an incredible comeback and they would crush the Allies as literally Berlin burned around them. And their fearless leader was living in a bunker. Um, the Democrats believe the propaganda about Kamala. Why, we've got all of these online virtual meetings happening. We've got white cringy women for Kamala talking about, we have to put our white privilege aside and listen. Listen, that's code for, even if you hear someone of color say something that is so off the wall and so incorrect and so abhorrently wrong, don't correct them. Don't say that's wrong. You listen. Listen. Then we had the cringy soy boys for Kamala. You know, white dudes. There was this one, and, and, and there was supposedly, you know, we're supposed to be impressed that there were there were movie actors on this, this call, this, this Zoom meeting. Why, Jeff Bridges. Oh, okay. And then I was watching some little fat roly-poly guy talking about, who has Donald Trump got from Celebrity but Kid Rock? Really, Kid Rock? Look who we got. Joe Rogan? Look who we got. And, and I'm like, who is this fat little guy? And somebody told me, well, that, he was Olaf. I'm like, o Olaf? Wasn't that like a cartoon character in, a, in Frozen? So this, this, this cartoon voice thinks he's an A-list actor? Um, Sean Astin, you know, Rudy, Rudy. You know, going on about how we have to have Kamala. She 
She smiles. She dances. We want somebody who smiles and dances is going to fend off World War III. Somebody who smiles and dances can control the border, which she has failed to do in the three and a half years that she was charged. As the borders are, don't let the media put that down the memory hole. Because she dances and she smiles. The fat roly-poly Olaf talking about how I want to be able to tell my girls that we got the first woman president. And there it is. This is how they've been able to do the complete and total makeover of Kamala. They're making her the female Obama. The female Obama. She is Obamala. That's her new name. Don't worry about trying to call her Kamala, Camilla, Kamula, whatever it is. Each week it changes on what it is we're supposed to call her. She's Obamala. Period. And what they're trying to do is virtue signal now that to be on the right side of history, you want to vote for the woman who knows how to laugh and smile and dance because she is a woman. And even better, she's a woman of color. Forget the policy. See, there, there, there's too much of Kamala's track record to try to memory hole. They, they've given up on that. They, they tried to rewrite history. She's not the border czar. She's not this. She's not that. There's just, there's so much of it out there. Even YouTube can't flush it all that fast. There's just way too much out there about Kamala. So now they, they have pivoted already because her polls are actually going down. They have pivoted away from trying to rewrite her record or even defend her record or re-explain her record. She's flipped and flopped on four key issues. Um, we're not even going to talk about that. She's a woman. What an opportunity in history. How many Barack Obama supporters back in the day said the reason they voted for him was not about the policy. It was not about his ideology. It was about they wanted to be on the right side of history. And how did the Republicans try to fight against that? Well, we tried to inform everybody about his associations with people like the Reverend Jeremiah Wright and, and Saul Linsky and, 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 and all of these radical communist ties that Barack Obama had. And America wasn't listening. They were too enamored with this guy with a personality who was going to be the first African-American president. This was history. And this is what they're trying to do with Kamala. This is it. They've, they're trying to turn her into Obamala. Uh, you know, you, you can bring up all of her failures, all of her track records, all of the things that she's done, and they're trying to get people to not listen. She smiles. She dances. And they're going after J.D. Vance. And make no mistake about this. Can you, can you Republicans please figure this out? That no matter who Trump had as a running mate, they're going to viciously go after him. See, their hands are still a little bit tied over going after Donald Trump because of the assassination attempt that failed. And we, even when they tried to get uh, Director Ray from the FBI to insinuate that maybe Donald Trump wasn't actually shot, maybe it was just some shrapnel, you know, from like one of the teleprompters. And of course, clear photographs show none of the teleprompters were hit. There was no glass that shattered off the teleprompter. There's pictures of the bullet actually whizzing by Donald Trump's head. And finally, the FBI had to come out and override their own director and say, no, definitively, Donald Trump was in fact shot. And every day that there's hearings on Capitol Hill with the people running the Secret Service, you have even Democrats saying, this is, this is on one level sheer incompetence, and on another level, we have to start asking, did they let this happen on purpose? You have Democrats doing that. Because there actually are some Democrats who understand, hey, if they can do it to Donald Trump, they could do it to our guy. So, <clears throat> right now... Kamala and the Democrats are a little bit handcuffed and really attacking Donald Trump the way they would like to because, after all, it was a lot of their rhetoric that emboldened this psychotic 
Trump supporter, who, or I'm sorry, Biden supporter, and he didn't work alone. And he was, he was, he was handpicked for this job. Don't, don't. But they can't really go after Trump like they would like to. So they need a new punching bag. <gasps> Enter J.D. Vance. And by the way, by the way, by the way, it wouldn't have mattered if he had picked Yunkin. They would be tearing Yunkin apart. If he had picked Nikki Haley, they'd be shredding Nikki Haley. It wouldn't matter who he picked. This is what the media does. Remember how vicious the media was to Dan Quayle? Remember how... Vicious the media was to St. Mike Pence. Of course, now he's a saint again because he's anti-Trump. But back in the day, why Kamala mopped the floor with him in the vice presidential debate and, and Mike, uh, uh, Mike Pence was seen as just this inept buffoon by the media. And of course, you know, you have George W's VP, you know, the guy who really should be in prison for war crimes and his and his daughter, you know, leading the, the J6 inquiry. So it wouldn't matter who Trump picked. And ask yourself about the last election cycles where we went with the mediocre, milk toast, middle of the road type Republicans. How'd it work out for Mitt Romney and his binders of women? How did it work out for John McCain, who didn't want to go too hard after Barack Obama? How'd that work out for them? Hmm? Um, they hate Donald Trump, but they hate J.D. Vance, and here's why. J.D. Vance is what the Democrat Party used to be. The Rust Belt, middle class, middle America worker and he connects with them. And they are trying to do everything they can now to portray him as weird. And he's not really, you have yeah, that the governor, Boshier, whatever his name is from Kentucky, he's not really from here. He's not really, he's not really kin to Kentucky. Yes, he is. And they're afraid of J.D. Vance because of how well he connects with the average person. So they have to do everything they can to destroy his character and even insinuate that he and his wife are only in this for the grift. They have to make everything that comes out of his mouth suspect and racist and bent. But the truth is, no matter who Donald Trump Picked, they were going to do this to. So swapping him out is an admission and it is a blink. And when you do that, you've automatically lost. Mr. Trump will not replace J.D. Vance, nor should he. If anything, Donald Trump needs to lean into this. J.D. Vance needs to lead into this and go hard. And I would mock the smiling Kamala Harris comments in ads I'd have that cackle laugh, and I would just start running through while millions of people were crossing the border illegally, and crime statistics were going up in this country, and fentanyl overdoses were going up in this country. Kamala was, <laughs> and dancing. And I'd just start listing things like that while you were paying more at the grocery store and having to decide at the grocery store, would you buy this or would you buy that because you can't buy both? And how are you going to put gas in the car? And how are you going to get your kids to the dentist? What was Kamala doing? <laughs> Smiling and dancing. That, that, I just, I'd ram this down their throat. That she smiles, she dances, she's got personality. She's Mamala, as Drew Barrymore said, and we just need a big hug. And then I would hit people with the seriousness of, do we need a mommy right now as Russia and Ukraine take us to the brink of World War III, as the Middle East is blowing up under the Biden foreign policy of which Kamala is a big part of? Or do we put a man back in the White House that can take command, bring peace, secure the border, and bring the economy back in line so that you can afford to live. That's the message. And I'm sorry 
Sean, Aston, Rudy. I don't give a flying flip if Trump smiles and dances. We need a president who can get the job done. A few moments later. Oh, and, and one more thing to fat little Olaf. All Donald Trump has is Joe Rogan and Kid Rock. First of all, Kid Rock could buy and sell you 10 times over. Kid Rock fills stadiums just based on his name. I got a feeling if we ran your name out there, you couldn't fill a nightclub. And Joe Rogan, the number one podcaster in the world. And don't forget, movie actors like Dennis Quaid. Ever heard of him? He's for Trump. James Wood. He's definitely on the Trump train. I know, you would consider him. He's a has-been. Really, he's an Academy Award winner. And he did a little movie uh, just about a year ago that just kind of mopped everything up at the at the Oscars. And what was that little movie that uh, uh, he was responsible for making? Oh, yeah, Oppenheimer. Ever heard of it? Oh, and then there's, of course, Hulk Hogan. And he can't wait to have a little chat with some soy boys like you.